Even its adversaries recognized the name, City of Explorers. It shaped the face of modern civilization as we know it today. Lisbon has been Portugal's formal capital since its conquest from the Moors in 1147. It was the first empire that spread its colonies across continents. After its flag was flown on the North African coast in 1415, this small nation took its language, culture and cuisine to North and South America, Africa and various regions of Asia and Oceania. Lisbon was a magnet for wayfarers. In 1477, Christopher Columbus was in residence, working as a cartographer and studying geography before taking up seaborne commissions to the North Atlantic and Africa. It was from this riverbank, some 500 years ago, that mighty ships first set off into the unknown. They would later claim the New World, here stands the monument to the discoveries. It is made up of a group of sculptures that represent the prow of a caravel, a small sailing ship constructed by the Portuguese to explore the Atlantic Ocean. Leading the ship is Prince Henry the Navigator, who established a navigation school that would teach the craft of navigation to legendary explorers like Vasco da Gama and initiate other adventures of discovery. It seemed like the perfect place to start our own expedition. Nearby is our first destination. It was built in the early 18th century by a descendant of Vasco da Gama. Palace of the Counts of Ribeira Grande, whose coat of arms still decorates the facade, is one of the largest Baroque palaces in the city. It is located on Junqueira Street, whose name dates back to the old river of Rio Seco that still runs underground. In the 18th century, the noble families rushed to this area to erect summer estates with sumptuous palaces that touched the river. The palace was later bought by the Count of Ribeira Grande and it will survive with little damage one of the most devastating earthquakes, also known as the Great Lisbon Earthquake. In 1755, in combination with subsequent fires and a tsunami, the earthquake almost totally destroyed Lisbon and surrounding areas. Seismologists today estimate that the Lisbon earthquake had a magnitude of 8.4 on the moment magnitude scale. Chronologically, it was the third known large-scale earthquake to hit the city. Estimates place the death toll in Lisbon alone between 10 and 30,000 people, making it one of the deadliest earthquakes in history. The earthquake accentuated political tensions in Portugal and profoundly disrupted the country's colonial ambition. As the first earthquake studied scientifically for its effects over a large area, it led to the birth of modern seismology and earthquake engineering. Throughout the 20th century, this palace was a private school and later, after being acquired by the state, a high school. 
Although altered quite a bit after being adapted to serve as a school in 1920, there are still many original elements of the old palace, such as the monumental two-story facade and the chapel of Nossa Senhora do Carmo, with its main tripartite facade, particularly square nave and main altarpiece. During one period it was also inhabited by the son of the first Portuguese to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. We thought we would say that we came to the end of the end because it was open to the city of the Traga. We were looking for a church for the 17th century and still another stone, which is monumental. The rest of the city is more and more broken because in the 19th century there were a few kinds of middle schools, even one church academy in one period, so there were all new stones. But we managed to find what we were looking for and it looks good as well. The way we managed to find it was a little tricky, but in fact we managed to find it as well. U biti smo ušli i glumili da smo, ne znam, fotografi za arhitekturu i niko nas nije fermao pol posto. Čak su nas ljudi micali iz puta i onak, bilo je fakat cool. Currently it's in the process of being classified by the Institute of the Management of Architectural and Archaeological Heritage and will become a five-star hotel and a museum of contemporary art. The initiative is a part of a congress center which together with other museums, such as the Contemporary Art Collection Berardo and the Future Coach Museum, will form an interesting cluster of culture, art and heritage. Let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on the revitalization of this building. On the trail of famous Portuguese explorers, we set off on our own journey towards Sintra, a town and municipality in the Greater Lisbon region, a major luxury and tourism destination, as well as one of the wealthiest municipalities in the country. We were searching for a villa with a very distinct look. It was one of those locations you would never want to miss out on. Even famous explorers made mistakes and without realizing, discovered something completely different. The same thing happened to us. We found out that our coordinates were wrong and in its place was another location we didn't know or hear about while planning our journey. Don't worry, we actually managed to find the location we've shown you, but you will have to wait a few episodes to see it. Looking up towards the overgrown vegetation, we knew that this newly discovered location is definitely worth checking out. Besides learning that the name of the villa is Casa das Camellias, that it's from 1810, there were no other documents to learn anything about this beautiful house. There are a lot of bottles around the house that are water, I didn't see them all, I only saw a few. There are a few rooms for the entrance to the parcel, of which one or two are down on the road, and the rest are here like this, and the trees are burning through the city. The villa is occupying a huge lot with multiple stories and variable phases of abandonment. There's nothing in. It is a very fast thing. <laughs> you have a few steps and then no Drop. steps.
the basement while filming the huge fireplace, a cold breeze can be felt blowing from the next room. Inside we found an entrance to an underground tunnel that led into the hill. As our excitement grew, we ventured further. The tunnel was narrow and odd, leading into a dead end without any rooms. Its true purpose is kind of a mystery. Maybe it was never finished, maybe it was just used to store wine. We are doubtful of the latter because there were no storage rooms in which the wine would sit. We are hoping by putting this footage on the internet that someone will recognize its purpose and let us know in the comments.